pleasant good day to all who are tuning in to Christ Jesus is Lord ministry I want to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus and thank you for tuning into this channel I hope that you will share these teachings with a friend and also I hope that they will bless your hearts and edify you and educate you and enlighten you more concerning the scriptures today we're going to be looking at the two seals and before we go any further let us bow our heads for prayer. Father, we bless your name, we glorify your name, we thank you for the privilege that we can come and study your words. I pray for those who are tuning in and those who will tune in in the future and who will listen. Bless us now, we pray. Cover us with your blood. Protect us from the enemy. Give us spiritual insight, foresight, and understanding. And remove all prejudices from our hearts and from our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hope and trust all of you are doing well. So today this is very much might be a controversial study. We'll be looking at the two seals and we're going to start by reading a passage of scripture uh, in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 7. We'll read Exodus chapter 12 and verse 7. And also verse 13. So Exodus chapter 12 verses 7 and 13. And it reads thus. And they shall take up the blood and strike it on the two side post and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now we are looking at a seal, two seals. What is a seal? One may ask, one may have heard the definition of a seal. I'm not talking about a navy seal now. I'm not speaking of the animal seal in the sea. But I'm speaking of a seal that is used to seal something that is important. A document. Now, a seal is a piece of metal or other hard substance, usually round or oval, and which is in, engraved some image or device, and sometimes a legend or inscription. This is used by individuals, corporate bodies, and states for making impressions on wax, upon instruments of writing, as an evidence of the authenticity. So, seals are sometimes worn in rings. We see that kings have seal, queen have seal, pope has seal, corporations have seal, businesses have seal, depending. And we're going to look at how important seals are. We see that before God poured out his judgment upon Egypt, that Israel was separated from the Egyptian through the blood of the Passover sacrifice that they were told that they should strike the blood on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house and the blood shall be a token to them and God said that when he saw the blood he will pass over and the plague shall not be upon them and they will not be destroyed and for us who are familiar with the story of Moses and Pharaoh and the ten plagues we saw that the final plague was that of the death of the firstborn of all the Egyptians when God told them that they should kill the Passover lamb and use the blood to put on the lintels and on their doorposts and when the destroying angel is passing over because they are sealed by the blood their premises their dwelling is secured by the blood of the Lamb, seal, then they will not be destroyed. And so it is God's people is going to receive 
Amar, they're gonna be sealed. So that time to come, when the destruction should come, it will not fall upon them as those plagues which are written in the book of Revelation, those seven plagues, when God would have finished sealing his people and those plagues are falling, then those who are righteous and those who are sealed by God, the plagues will not do them any hurt. But it will only do those who have received the mark of the beast with his names written in their foreheads are the mark on their hands and take the number of his name according to Revelation 13 verses 16 and 17 we see the plague is going to fall on them because they are not sealed but God's people will be delivered Ezekiel chapter 9 verses 3 and 4 says and the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writers in corn by his side. Verse 4, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abomination that be done in the midst thereof. So we see here that the men at the city of Jerusalem, the people had committed such great apostasy against God. And then there were some who were crying. They weren't with this abomination. They weren't with these practices and, and these apostasy that leaders and, 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 and the common people, if you may allow me to use that word, were doing. So God sent forth a man to put a mark upon the foreheads of the men that were sighing and crying because of the abomination that was done in the midst thereof. And when this happened, this was the sealing of those who would have been saved. Because those who did not receive the mark from this man clothed in linen, they were going to be killed. And if we read the entire chapter 9, we see that they went through with battle acts some men. And they destroyed both old, young, sick, lame, lazy, you name it. As long as they were not sealed by this man in, man in linen. This man who had the writer's ink on by his side. They would be, would have been destroyed. Now... We see that this happened in the Old Testament and what is telling us that the faithful will be marked by God for salvation while the wicked will be ripe for destruction and they will be destroyed. And we see that prior to the coming of Christ in judgment, there will be a final sealing work carried out according to Revelation chapter 7. Verses 2 and 3, it says, I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice. So for those, there are many, I've seen many people on social media talking about the seal of God, and many have their own fanciful theories and ideas, and many have followed after fiction. And it caused much friction within the body of Christ because people are assuming what sealing of God is or what the seals are, are for those who will be sealed, how they will be sealed. But the Bible does not misappropriate word. It does not leave us in wonderland like Alice. Neither does it send us on a wild goose chase or leave us in limbo between hell and hell and heaven but the bible 
states clearly and the Bible interprets itself and tells us how the people of God will be sealed and who would carry out this the sealing of God's people. The Bible in Revelation chapter 7 verses 2 and 3 says, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. And verse 3 says, Saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servant of our God in their forehead. So we see that there are or there is an angel whom God has appointed to seal his people, his servants in their foreheads. And we see that the enemy in Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 and 17 does the same thing because it says that he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So we see that God is going to seal his people, and God is sealing a set of people, people who are obedient to his laws and his commandments and his statutes, his precepts, his word who do not go contrary and follow after fables and fiction, those who do not subscribe to the teaching or the doctrines of men, but are the doctrines of devil, but rather to the doctrine of Jesus Christ and God the Father, which is found in the Bible. And we see that there is an essential nature of the seal, the sealing of God's people. Many would ask, how will the people be sealed? But the Bible does not leave us in limbo or leave us in a state of consternation or wonderland like Alice has have said before. But the Bible tells us how the people of God will be sealed. In Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 14 it says in whom also after that you believe you were sealed with the holy spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance so the bible is telling us that we will be sealed according to revelation chapter 7 verse 10 the angel was told not to hurt the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads. So, they will be sealed by God, Holy Spirit. The essential nature of the seal is the Spirit of the living God. And let us look at Ephesians chapters, ch chapter 1. We look at chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, and also chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14 says, In whom you also trusted, after that you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believe you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory so we see here that after we have heard the word of truth the bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god after we have heard the gospel of jesus christ or uh, which brings salvation to all of those of us who believe we were sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. And when the Bible says, which is the earnest of our redemption, of our inheritance rather, it is important for us to understand what the Bible is saying here. What does it mean by earnest? 
when the Bible speaks of earnest, it speaks of an ardent in pursuit of an object, eager to obtain. It says, which is the earnest of our inheritance. So in other words, it is saying that we are serious. And that it is important because the word earnest means ardent, it means warm, it means eager, zealous, animated, importunate, as earnest in love, earnest in prayer. So we are eager, we are zealous to inherit. Such an inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise and glory of God. So we have not yet attained to the ultimate, which is glorification. But we have been sealed by the Spirit of God and we experience justification and sanctification through Jesus Christ and his righteousness and ultimately when Christ returns we will be glorified now Ephesians 4 and verse 30 tells us that and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption so we are to be careful the Bible tells us that every sin that a man commits he will be able he will be forgiven but a man commits a sin against the Holy Spirit he will not be forgiven if he blasphemes the Holy Spirit uh, so we see that when it comes to the seals or sealing, the saints will manifest outwardly evidence of the invisible spiritual seal upon their hearts. In Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12, it says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. So if you are sealed by the Holy Spirit unto redemption, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13-14, it says, You are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. If you are sealed and you are being led by the Holy Spirit, you are going to be obedient to God. If you are led by the Spirit, then you are of the Spirit of God. And if you said you are sealed and will be sealed, then that you're going to be obedient to the commandments of Jesus Christ. It is Albert Barnes who says concerning the seal of God, and I quote, it would be something that would be conspicuous or prominent. It would not be merely some internal sealing or some designation by which they would be known to themselves and to God. But it would be something apparent. Notes, comment on Revelation 7 and verse 2. So in other words, those who are sealed, it's not just some internal sealing to say that, Okay, you alone know that you are sealed and the Holy Spirit alone know that you are sealed. Those around you are going to see outward manifestation of the sealing by the Holy Spirit. And what is that? You're going to be obedient to the commandments of God and you're going to have the faith of Jesus Christ. Just as those who would receive the mark of the beast, they would be sealed to eternal damnation and destruction so those around 
and living will know that they have accepted the image of the beast and they worship the beast according to Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 and 17 and that they will not have their part in the Lamb's book of life but will be thrown in the lake of fire according to Revelation. So we see, observing God's law becomes rather important because Isaiah 8 verse 16 says, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. So you see we come against the word seal again. It speaks in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. In Ezekiel 9 verse 4. And now we come again the word seal in Isaiah 8 verse 16. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my people. Which commandment is in a special sense the seal of the law? That's a question that we need th to ask. It is written in Exodus 31 verse 13. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. And we can look at Ezekiel 20 and verse 12. And we can turn right there at the moment, Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 12. It says, Moreover also I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. Exodus 30, 31 and verse 13. I'll read that in your hearing. Exodus 31 and verse 13. I know that there are some who might be disturbed at this study. But I'm just giving you the word of God. And if you don't want to listen, you don't have to listen. But you will learn. It would behoove you to listen because you will learn something. And if you have a disagreement with the word of God and you think that I'm um, teaching heresy, you could leave a comment. Exodus 31 verse 13 says, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation, that you may know that I am the Lord that does sanctify you. Albert Barnes on the seal says, Quote, it would be most natural to suppose that the name of the living God would be engraved on it. Speaking about the seal now, Albert Barnes talking. So that that name would appear on anyone to whom it might be affixed. Notes, comment, and Revelation 7 verse 2. The Sabbath is the one commandment in the law in which the name of God is is mentioned and it is more than any other commandment the seal of the law so we spoke about the seal of the law in Isaiah 8 16 where it says seal the law among my disciples now we know that a seal as the name of the person. A seal also shows the person, gives the person's title. It shows the geographical, geographical location, their boundaries wherein they rule. And we see that contrasting the saints of the last day with the wicked and the mark that they would both bear is that, as I've quoted already in Revelation chapter 13 verse 16, it says, He cause all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. 
and we that's Revelation chapter 13 and verse 16 Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9 also states that and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand verse 10 the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So we see that God's seal, God's people will receive it in their foreheads according to Ezekiel chapter 7 and verse 4. Revelation chapter 13 verse 16 tells you that the wicked who will be living in the last day will receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads. So we see that both are on opposite poles, the righteous and the wicked. And both will receive a mark or both will be sealed by whosoever they are following after. Those who go after the beast will receive their mark in their forehead. They will be sealed. And those who are living for Christ, they will be sealed with the Holy Spirit. But the wicked will be sealed with the mark of the man, which is 666, the mark of the beast. Now, the mark of the beast is a counterfeit of the Spirit of God. According to 1 John 4 and verse 3, it says, Every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. I've done Antichrist, Devil's Delusion, and the Antichrist parts 1 and 2, and also Antichrist on Mars. Those are three important videos that you can go and listen, and you will learn much about the Antichrist and who the Antichrist is. And now we are dealing with the seal of God. We saw that the, the Antichrist and also in the great apostasy, that the great conspiracy rather, that they who receive the mark of the beast will be destroyed and they will receive it in their foreheads and it is the mark of a man. While they who receive the seal of God in their foreheads, according to Ezekiel chapter 7 and verse 4, will be receiving the seal of the Holy Spirit. And it is indeed, the foreheads there symbolize that it is a conscious decision that an individual will be making in receiving either the mark of the beast, which is the mark of the man, or the seal of God which is the Holy Spirit. Now, we see that the beast is going to counterfeit the Spirit of God, which God's chosen will receive in their foreheads. And we also see that there will be a counterfeit law that will be imposed upon man by the Antichrist spirit. In Daniel 7 verse 25, it says, He shall speak great words against the Mosai, and shall wear out the saints of the Mosai, and think to change times and laws. Literally, the law. So we see that this Antichrist spirit is going to blaspheme God. He's going to try to do great evil to the saints of the Mosai and think to change the times and the law. Antichrist and mass, I explain this in depth and I advise you to listen to it. What counterfeit 
day of worship as Antichrist set up in opposition to the Sabbath of the law of God? The answer is Sunday, the first day of the week, in place of the seventh day, the Sabbath of the fourth commandment and the seal of the law of God. When the sealing of the people of God is completed, what decree will go forth? The Bible in Revelation 22 verse 11 says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. So we are see that when the sealing is complete, there will be no chance of repenting. Everyone would have decided rationally and intelligibly whether they've been deceived by the beast and the antichrist and the false prophets or they would have made a conscious decision in accepting Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior and not wander after the beast and his image and serve him. And that we see that the Bible is saying he who is unjust, let him remain unjust. He can't repent. He that is filthy, let him be filthy. He that is righteous will be righteous. He can't go back and being filthy or turn away because he would have been sealed. He would have made that choice and it would have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life and sealed for the kingdom of God. He who is holy will remain holy. He cannot go and try to live an unholy life. It is nearing the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The plagues would have been fallen. Antichrist would have been en masse. People would have received the mark of the beast and his image, whether in their foreheads or in their hands. And people would have wandered after the beast. And Christ's people who have the seal would be persecuted. Jesus is saying that whatever decision we choose, there are two seals. One for the beast who will give, which is a mark of a man, and one that God gives, which is the Holy Spirit. And when we accept either, we cannot, we can't. I must say here, the mark of the beast is not yet. No one is forced to worship a man or the Antichrist. Everyone is worshiping now freely, whether in the comforts of their home or through the COVID restriction, they are online or ten in a church are wearing masks but no one is being persecuted by a religious power worldwide and no one is confiscating the bible well we know that's happening in muslim countries some muslim countries that you can't have the bible but i'm speaking about within the christian world where you have a one world religion and men would be forced to economic sanction to worship the beast and his image. And we see that in Revelation chapter 18 verse 4 and 2 Timothy 2 verse 9 that one last appeal is now offered to all. Revelation chapter 18 verse 4 says, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that he be not partakers of her sins and that he receive not of her plagues that's revelation 18 verse 4 so god wants you to come out of religious confusion babylon mystery babylon and god wants you not to receive of her plagues we read the book of revelation we see that the plagues chapter 16 tells us of the plagues that will fall upon the earth the seven plagues and God does not want such to befall you 
So he said, come from among them. My people, and be not partaker of her sins, and that he receive not of her plague. Those who partake in the sins of Babylon will receive of her plagues. And God is going to judge you accordingly. As the Bible says in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through to 15, that the dead will be judged out of the things written in the book. They will be judged according to their works. So what works are you doing? Are they works of righteousness? Are they works of wickedness and filthiness? Check yourself before you wreck yourself. And receive of the plagues that God is going to pour out on Babylon. I hope and trust that your hearts were blessed by this study and I hope that you will continue to study and you can leave a comment in the comment section if you disagree or if you agree it doesn't matter if it goes according to the Word of God because we know that the Word of God stands paramount and we have to go by it is very interesting to know that many people misunderstand what a seal is and when it speaks about the people of God being sealed many people have misconstrued what the Bible teaches and many people have given themselves over to erroneous teaching and doctrines of devils now as I have made mention of Revelation chapter 7 verse 3 already, wherein the angel came down and said, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. It is interesting to note, according to Webster, that God has a seal, for so he says in the above quotation, that is Revelation chapter 7 verse 3, Webster here, Dr. Webster is making mention of, and he continues to say, a seal is a mark, sign, figure, or image. That which confirms, ratifies, or makes stable assurance. That which authenticates. So, Dr. Webster here is helping us to understand that the seal of God is that which authenticates his servants from the false uh, people, those who have not accepted the righteousness of Christ and those who are not being obedient to his commandments, his laws and his precepts. According to a quote from Thoughts on Daniel and the Revelation page 448 um, referring to Daniel chapter 6 verse 8 where in the Bible present the object of a sign or seal now O king establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed what this is simply saying is that the king was supposed to affix the signature of royalty showing who it is that demands obedience and his right to demand it now, according to Thoughts on Daniel and the Revelation, pages, page 448, it says a seal is used always in connection with some law or enactment that demands obedience. And so we see that a seal is not there for a show or because those who have the seal, it's for some fashion statement are for some adornment but the, the seal is there to show who it is connected with and to enact some form of obedience on the part of he who owns the seal whether it be a monarch whether it be the government some president 
or some corporation. Now, as I have afford mention Isaiah 8 verse 16, we see that God's seal is connected with his law. And Isaiah 8 verse 16 says, Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. Now, the question I love to ask my listeners, does the first commandment show who is its author? The first commandment says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exodus 20 verse 3. Who is the me here? Spoken of in this commandment. It is not stated. That prohibition might come from almost any source or anyone. Any heathen could claim it as a command from his God. And so far as the commandment itself goes, no one could disprove his claim. So anybody can come to you and say, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. His God, which is a sculpted image, some high and brass, some fall of the ear, or whatever he chose to be his God, could be, he could quote the first commandment and tells you, Thou shalt, his God told him, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, and you cannot disprove it, neither can I disprove it. And also, the third commandment, the question is, does that show who the author of the law is? The third commandment says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take it his name in vain. We should take careful note that the Lord thy God may mean to one nation one being. And to another nation, another being. The statement of itself is not definitive or not definite enough to be generally accepted. The same is true of any or all of the other commandment, with the exception of one. Now, which commandment point out unmistakably the author of the law and show his right to command? Let us look at Exodus chapter 20 and verse 10 to 11. It says, But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord bless the Sabbath day and hallowed it. The fourth commandment alone gives the name of the author of the law in that way which shows him to be the creator of all things. Hence his undisputed right to command. It is his sign of authority. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and on the seventh day rested and was refreshed. Now we see that the Sabbath was given as a sign for a particular purpose. Ezekiel 20 12 says, Moreover, I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. So every time the weekly Sabbath came around, their minds would revert to the commandment which enjoin its observance and the reason for it. As often as this occurred, they would call to mind the creative power of God. And as long as they should do this, they could never forget God or become idolaters. Had the Sabbath been faithfully kept by all from the first, you could never have been an idolater because God would have been remembered weekly it is important to note that according to Revelation chapter 7 verse 2 to 4 it says that 144,000 who are saved when the Lord comes are the Father's name in their foreheads 
and also the seal of God in their foreheads. According to Revelation chapter 14 verse 1 and Revelation chapter 7 verse 2 to 4. So Revelation chapter 14 verse 1 reads thus and I'll read it in your hearing. Revelation chapter 14 verse 1 says that And I looked and lo a lamb stood on the Mount Zion and with him an hundred and forty four thousand having his father's name written in their forehead. And chapter 7 verses 2, 3 and 4 reads as follows. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, and having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth. And the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Verse 4, And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So we see here that the Bible tells us that those who will be sealed will have the seal of God in their foreheads and they will be saved. And John the Revelator said he saw the Lamb standing with them on Mount Zion. Now the Bible tells us that God's remnant church is distinguished while waiting for the Lord to appear on the white clouds. They are distinguished due to the fact that they keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. 